In this video lecture, we will go over relative humidity and why an understanding of it is crucial to understanding cloud formation. Humidity simply refers to the amount of water vapor in the air. All of the air around us has water in it in the form of vapor. The more water vapor, the more humid the air. However, when it comes to weather, most of the time we're actually more interested in relative humidity than just absolute humidity. So, if you have some parcel of air and you imagine that the yellow circle here, which I'm outlining in red, uh, represents the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can hold, and the blue circle indicates the actual amount of water that's in the air. Well, the ratio between the two, the amount of water vapor relative to the maximum possible amount of vapor that the air could possibly hold, that number is the relative humidity. So here we have the equation for that, relative humidity equals the amount of water vapor in the air divided by the max amount of water vapor that the air can hold. But this thing on the bottom is actually dependent on the temperature, right? It turns out that warm air can hold more water vapor than cold air. So as you cool that air down, the amount of vapor it is able to contain gets smaller. And that's why you see the yellow circle here getting smaller because the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can possibly hold is less at colder temperatures. And if you cool that air parcel all the way down to the point that the amount of water vapor in the air equals the maximum amount it's capable of holding, well at that point you have reached 100% relative humidity. So in this image that yellow dot and that blue dot are the same size the air is holding all of the moisture that it possibly can in the form of water vapor. Air that is at 100% relative humidity is saturated with vapors, with vapor, water vapor. In our daily lives, 100% relative humidity is actually quite dangerous because under those conditions, water will not evaporate and the evaporation of sweat is the primary way for the human body to cool itself down. So instead of evaporating, that liquid just hangs out on our bodies, making us sticky and gross and can actually lead to overheating, including heat stroke in some cases. So it's actually quite dangerous um, if it's hot out and you have 100% relative humidity. Uh, the phenomenon though is actually one that we've probably experienced in, in a different way. If you've ever grabbed a cold bottle from the fridge and then you've seen water condense on the outside of that bottle, you might have wondered where the water came from. Well, the water was already there in the air surrounding that bottle. Um, and when you cooled that air down, it wasn't able to hold as much water vapor as it previously could. And so what happens to the water vapor that was dissolved within the air? Well, it condenses out and forms all of these li little liquid droplets all over the bottle. We call that a dew um, sometimes. Um, one manifestation of this in the atmosphere is clouds. Generally speaking, the higher up in the troposphere that one goes, the colder it is. So a rising air parcel is going to, for multiple reasons, cool down as it gets higher and higher. And as that air parcel cools down, the relative humidity of that parcel will increase because colder air can hold less and less water vapor. So if this number on the bottom keeps getting smaller than the entire equation is getting bigger, closer and closer to 100%. And once the relative humidity increases all the way to that 100%, at that point, the air parcel is saturated with water vapor and the vapor is no longer able to exist uh, as a vapor dissolved in the atmosphere. And instead, it will begin to condense out and form tiny liquid droplets, which will then just be suspended in the atmosphere. And these tiny droplets actually are what makes up the clouds. So clouds are actually liquid water up in the atmosphere. They are not a vapor. They are liquid water or ice, but that's 
that's a different story. All right, relative humidity can be a little tricky, so let's go ahead and quiz ourselves. If the temperature of a parcel of air remains the same and condensation occurs, absolute humidity A increases or B decreases? The correct answer is decreases, right? So there's no change in temperature, but even if there was, it doesn't matter because absolute humidity does not depend on the temperature of the air. That's just how much water vapor is in the air. If some of it condenses out into liquid form, it's no longer water vapor in the air. So the amount of water vapor that you have in the air must have decreased. If the temperature of a parcel of air remains the same and condensation occurs, what happens to relative humidity this time? Does it increase or decrease? Well, temperature stayed the same. Okay, so that number on the bottom of our equation stayed the same, but the amount of water vapor in the air decreased, which means that the relative humidity must also have decreased. If absolute humidity remains constant and the temperature decreases, what happens to relative humidity? Does it A increase or B decrease? Well, if temperature goes down, that means that the air is colder and cold air can't hold as much vapor as warm air. So it must be um, without gaining or losing any moisture at all, that colder air parcel is actually closer to being saturated. So relative humidity actually increases in this case. This concludes the relative humidity video lecture. Hopefully you have a better understanding of the terms shown here.